so this is just a very quick video on inverse functions so um quite a straightforward topic and i suppose we just want to look at two little parts of this so each function has an inverse function and an inverse function will undo what the original function did the inverse of a function f of x is given by f inverse of x okay so we can see it's f to the power of minus one um, of x so we've seen inverse before when we have looked at trigonometry so the um, opposite of the tan function is tan inverse and the opposite of sine will be sine inverse um, and so on so hopefully this is still familiar to you so what we're going to do is we're going to look at two ways to find inverse functions so the first way is algebraically and the second way is graphically um, and both are quite important so both um, could be asked individually you could be asked to explain it so it is important to know both methods well so let's take our first example so using algebra to find inverse functions so we've been def we've been given this function here f of x and it's defined by 6x minus 4 so we're going to find its inverse so our first step is to replace f of x with y so we have y equals 6x minus 4 what we're trying to do is get the x on its own so basically we start off with y isolated but we want to end up with our x isolated so we're going to step by step undo what was there in the original function so the first thing we'll do is we'll bring that 4 across so what we'll do is we'll add 4 to both sides that will leave us with y plus 4 equals 6x and our final step then to get x on its own would be divide both sides by 6 so we're left with x y sorry y plus 4 over 6 equals x okay so that is our inverse function the only thing that we need to do now at this point is to change the notation slightly so instead of x we're going to replace that so first let me write this down so x equal to y plus 4 over 6 so all we've done is just swap the sides so we're going to change our x to be f inverse of x because that's what we wanted now since this is a function and all functions have to contain an x we're going to change our y so let's just highlight that here so we're going to change that y to x so anywhere there's a y in your inverse function we're going to change it to an x so we're left with x plus 4 over 6 okay so just to touch on this very slight very very briefly so we've been given in the question this piece here so they tell us that x is an element of or which means x is part of the real numbers which means it can be any positive negative whole number fraction or anything in between so any number on our number line basically now that is basically our domain so the x values that go into this function since that is all values in the real in the real um in the real numbers we don't have to change that in any way now so it's absolutely fine for this function to be x is an element of or now this won't always be the case so let's take an example where the domain um, has changed or rather needs to be changed so this again is using algebra to find the inverse function so find the inverse of this function now we can see straight away that this is just a little bit more complicated looking and the reason is we have been given here a range apologies we've been given here our domain so the x values and our range okay so we've been told that the domain what we put into the x and the range what we'll get out in the y in these two pieces here now if we just ignore that for a second and simply write the function as f of x equals so we're replacing that first part with f of x equals x squared over x squared plus one 
and we can now proceed to do what we did in the previous example. So we're first going to replace f of x with y. So y equals x squared over x squared plus 1. Now let's rearrange. So to get rid of the fraction, we're going to multiply both square, sorry, both sides by x squared plus 1. What will happen is these pieces will cancel, leaving us with x squared plus 1 by y is equal to x squared. We multiply out the bracket. x squared y plus y equals x squared. Now, we're trying to get x on its own, so we best bring our x's together. So we'll have x squared y minus x equals minus y. Okay. Apologies to x squared here. Now, we can see for both terms there's an x squared common, so we'll say x squared bracket y minus 1 equals minus y. And now we can divide both sides by y squared minus, sorry, by y minus 1. And when we do that, these pieces will cancel, leaving us with x squared equals minus y, y minus 1. Now at this point, we can clean that fraction up a little bit so it's not negative on the top, and that will leave us with 1 minus y. And the final step will be to square root both sides, leaving us at x is equal to y over 1 minus y, all under a square root. So just as before, So I just cleared this to give us a little bit of space. So the last thing that we had was x equals the square root y over 1 minus y. So just as before, we're going to change our x in this case to the f inverse of x, what we were looking for. And instead of the y's, we're going to change those to x's. And this is my inverse function. However, Coming back to these two pieces here, so again remember here I have my domain and here I have my range. Since the function is the inverse or I suppose the backwards version of the other, we basically at this point have to change our domain and our range. So what will happen is the domain of the original, so the x values we put in, will now be what we will get out. And similarly, the range, which was the data we got out, that's going to be what we put into this function. So what we have is the inverse function. Now, notice how I'm putting in the range from the original. And it's going to go to the domain of the original. So they basically swapped places. And that is x given. And here we have our function itself that we worked out. So in example one, all we were told was that x was an element of the real numbers. So basically, they didn't define any range for us. They only defined a domain. And because of that, we didn't have to do anything with the domain and range. So if you do get a more complicated example where the domain and the range are explicitly stated like here, this is how you would deal with them. So next we're going to look at sketching inverse functions. Now I'll just say apologies um, in advance because it's quite hard to draw quite accurately on this. So if you are doing this, please do not follow my shaky lines, please use a ruler. So we've been asked to sketch the inverse of this function. So they've provided us this function f on the graph and they want us to sketch it. Now you can of course work out the um, inverse function as we've done before and get some points, but that's quite a lot of work. And I suppose if they asked you to draw it, um, they might be looking for more accuracy. Here they're only asking us to sketch it. So how we're going to do this is we're going to use a fact that 
you should know about inverse functions and if you don't know this it's important that you learn it so I'm just going to give it to you here an inverse function is the image of the original function under symmetry in the line x equals y. So if you were ever asked about how do they re relate to each other, the original function and the inverse function and that that is it one is the image of the other under symmetry in the line x equals y so our first step is to draw x equals y so x equals y are where the values of x and y are the same so for us it's 0 0 1 1 2 2 and you're drawing your line through here so like I said at the start, please make sure that you're using a ruler and it's a lovely straight line. Okay. So apologies, I hit my mute button. Okay, so once that's drawn, what you want to do is basically imagine that that blue line is a mirror. And we want to capture the mirror image of the of the curve that we have here. So now I'm going to do my best and it would look something roughly like this and there's my F inverse. Now what you really should be doing is taking a few points and measuring them. So for example if I take this point here um, and we can take this point here and this point here and maybe this point here. What we can do is we can measure how far it is to that line and we go the same distance the other side and that's my image point. So here, there's another image point. Now this one straight away you can see actually probably should be somewhere a little bit over here. So I'm actually going to clean this up a bit. So if we go back here. Now, so that's looking a bit better already. So actually, I'm going to have to rub out this piece here. And it should be coming in somewhere around here. Now, it's, again, it's not very straight. It is quite hard to draw on this. But you get the sense of what's happening. Now, and that's bringing us to the last point. So that is how we would sketch using our graph so that's the graphical method and I suppose one thing um, that is quite useful about this method is when we're dealing with um, a log the graph of log functions and exponentials and they will relate to each other like this in an inverse way so um, it is kind of a useful tool not to have to always work out the inverse function especially if it's a little bit complicated but if you're ever asked to sketch and um, really what they're looking for is this idea of the image under uh, symmetry in the line x equals y so do make sure that you're comfortable with drawing x equals y so that's the points on the line will always have the same x and y coefficients so 0 0 1 1 2 2 and so on um, and then you're just basically measuring from one side to the other I suppose curves are a little bit more difficult to do than straighter lines straighter lines obviously by the very nature are a little bit easy but it is good to get some practice on these